Woohoo. Bikes. Run it up. Hi, and welcome back to the Dial Podcast. I am Jake Von Dering, and I'm here with Lance Friggin' Hepler. Lance Friggin' Hepler. Everything's changed. I don't know what to do. The, seat, the setup, the seats, everything. I'm supposed to be staring into it's, your eyes at this point. We're now too far apart, man. It's a, a long our, our chances of holding gaze. hands are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> chances of holding hands are low here, but it's not, okay because... Not impossible. But not impossible. <laughs> Anything's possible. <laughs> no no longer sitting to uh, Lance's left, but rather across the table, Mr. Matt Legrand. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet? You guys are looking pretty good. Looking better than me, that's yeah. for sure. Guess what? It's not true, man. Oh. I think I think this might set a record for the number of guest appearances on the Dial Podcast. I think maybe we need to figure out a way to make him not a guest, but take Evan Ooh. Price's spot. There we go. Just steal Evan Price. <laughs> you need to become a professional triathlete. Is that okay? Evan who? Exactly. <laughs> Oh, he won't even don't hear worry. that. Don't even, worry. Even don't worry. He's not offended. <laughs> don't worry. He's fine. To Matt's left, <laughs> Mr. Dylan Quapface Wiggins. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, what I up, need man? a good catchphrase. I was going to use yours, but then yeah, you, you can. Stole Go it. ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Use it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, you're, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Did I get it? <laughs> it's perfect. perfect. Got it. Ten times better than the way I did it. Thank you. Dylan, whatever I get one of those sweatshirts. That That is incredible. You get it in Bruges, and it says it's the bicycle capital of <sighs> Belgium, but I guarantee you it is not because they have uh, cobbled roads everywhere. Uh-huh. And there's, saw, freaking, there's like 40 bridges in that town, yeah, too. and maybe 30 bikes. <laughs> right. So where is everyone? Did you it's get it Bruges. there? Were you I there? Did. Oh, I, you did. I was there last year. Oh, crap. I, yeah. I went to Bruges last year. What? As well, did I see you? You there? guys probably what? crossed paths on How bikes. We miss each other in Bruges. No. Yeah, I was doing goes. the sightseeing tour from the movie in Bruges to see everywhere oh. they had you know, fights and jump out of windows. If you haven't seen that movie? It's incredible. I went and I saw the. Uh, I went and saw the altarpiece at the. At, wait, is that in Ghent? Never mind. Ghent mm. is very close to Bruges. They're like within it's like a like low rent Bruges, twenty <laughs> miles of each other. Ghent and Bruges. This is all Belgium. Slumming it. I was, I was slumming, slumming it. In it. Ghent. Real I, answer though. We did two nights in Brussels before Bruges, and in Brussels is just Bruges but better. And stay bigger. on target. <laughs> We're too close. Stay on target. We don't even have a target, but you guys need to stay on it. All right, <laughs> come There's on. No target. <laughs> Go take your bruise in another room. Mm. <laughs> hey. uh... It's been another week. We're, we're recording a little bit late because everybody's late. had some like like extra long week. But um, let's jump into some backpedaling stuff. Who wants to go first? I always go first. Dibs. Matt. Got dibs. <laughs> Matt has got I call dibs. one This is the legal hell dib of a back, process. Backpedal. I, I went to Europe and um, let's see. Did you go to Bruges? <laughs> I stopped in Bruges. <laughs> no, you did yes. not. I, well, it was a train stop. Oh, oh okay. Because you went to Paris. Yeah. See, I'm already derailing Matt's backpedal. That's okay. That's, that's it. That's This is part of the backpedal. Um, flew into Amsterdam. Direct flight from Portland to Amsterdam. Pretty wow. pretty good deal. How so many Northern hours was lights. that? It was ten and a half hours. Okay, you posted some Northern Lights pictures from the Holy plane. Oh, I, I yes. swear that I thought that that was something that you just went into doctor. No. Was that legit, straight up? Legit. Wow. Uh, Ethan was sitting. So no one flies this time of year to Amsterdam. So we had like the plane to ourselves, you know. And so it was just like spread out. And Ethan's like by the window, and he's like, "Hey, wow, Northern Lights!" And I'm like, "I've been waiting my whole life to see the Northern Lights. I have never seen them. Right? So it's like never on the bucket them. list, right? Yes, things it to is. Do. And so I go over there, and it's just like, oh. Okay, this is get this. the camera because Ethan was trying to take pictures and they weren't turning up very well. And I was like, "Let me try the iPhone 47 and see if that." <laughs> lo and behold, and I was like, "Enhance, enhance, enhance." It was good. Those are, I mean, it was it was neat to see. And then right after that, like shortly thereafter, we're flying over Greenland and you could see like all these like icebergs and things like just crazy cool stuff. And I was like. Never going to see those glaciers again, so better, <laughs> better, better watch take, them now. They better look at them now. So They're all melting. The flight there, I mean, yes, we flew through the night. We showed up at 8 a.m. in Amsterdam. And, like, of course, you can't check into your hotel until 2. And you're exhausted. Yes. And poor Ethan is my oldest kid. He's 13. I was like, we're renting bikes, and we're just going to bike around. And we biked around, like, all through downtown, downtown Amsterdam. Like, we biked, like, eight miles or ten miles. I don't know. It was crazy. Yeah. And was that on Strava? Exhausted. I think I posted, like, the problem with a lot of this stuff would be, like, I'd be biking, and my watch would, like, buzz at me and be like, it looks like you're biking. And I'm, like, trying to get it to, I'm pressing it with my nose ah. to get it to try to, like, start, start <laughs> yeah. the start, ride. Start yeah. the ride. And so most of the rides were, like, I kind of, like, missed half of them or gotcha. whatever. So. 
the the truth is is that I was going about twenty seven miles an hour before <laughs> before Strava recorded. I believe it. Took yeah. a couple and of then, watts KOMs. So while yeah. You're there, yeah. So then you know the only the parts that were recorded were slow. So but check into that. But like biking around Amsterdam, amazing, right? It was like dedicated roads. Oh, like yeah. they have the right of way over yeah. cars and pedestrians. And yeah. yeah. So it's it was just overwhelming kind of because I felt like first of all you're sitting on this like wagon of a bike, right? So you're sitting way upright, and and I got Ethan in tow with me, so you can't push the pace at all because he was not having it. And uh, and it was kind of overwhelming because people would just be like coming by you at 20 miles an hour, yeah, right? Yeah. And and like he's pretty confident on the bike, but it was like, I was like, just stay to the right, stay to the right, you know? And, and it was just a little, and like there were certain times where like I'd be turning um, left or whatever and someone would just be like, zoom, like sneak in in front of me or whatever. And like just, and then they would just push me like on my shoulder. Because there's so much bike traffic, right? I'm coming through. So they're just like, get out, you know, like, I see that you're turning, but I'm going in front of you first. And they would just put, use their hand and just push you. Wow. And I was like, okay. That's like this kind of town right I was there. Like, this is just, I guess this is how we roll. <laughs> this is what we're doing. It was super cool. But what was nice is like, you don't, you rent a bike, you don't need anything else. And you can get, I could get everywhere. Yes. And, um, and we stayed close to uh, DC Rainmaker, who's another YouTuber. And um, we didn't have to go far to like do any of the stuff like with him or whatever. And so basically everything was like four miles. It was like four miles to downtown, four miles to the pool we wanted to go to, four miles to the museums, maybe one mile to raise studio stuff. It was great. It was super fun. It's all flat, right? But did you get a sense of like like e-bike percentage? There was actually a lot of e-bike percentage because I think – it's just easier for you to accelerate and little things like that. And so I think a lot of people did e-bikes. I probably, percentage is tough. I would guess 20%, which is actually a huge number if you think about it. Like when you have, you know, any given ride, you're looking at like thousands of bikes that you're going to see. And 20% of that is on e-bikes. And you've got those um, cargo bikes, of course. That because, can that can haul like either three people yep. or all your groceries or, your or I'm... I'm taking a sofa to my apartment. It will haul all of and that. A stuff. lot of times it's like parents with kids and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these kids learn how to ride pretty quickly and pretty well. They like know how to like handle bikes better than Ethan, my oldest kid. And so they were just like, what, what are you doing? Why are you <laughs> hold your line? Why are you, <laughs> hold your why are you all over the place? But, uh, but the, the e-bikes, I think you would see the smaller e-bikes as well, but also like the cargo bikes as well would have like some sort of motor on them. And so it's good. It's just a little bit easier, even though it's flat and I didn't feel like I needed them. The e-bikes were faster if you were to want something like that. I don't know. Yeah, if you got to go to work or something like that and you don't want to get it sweaty. I don't know. It was, be nice. it was um, like snowing while I was there. Oh, okay. <laughs> like we were just like trying to put on as much clothes as we could possibly put on. It was pretty cold. Um, but yeah, so I biked every day that I was in Amsterdam. And then when we got to Paris, we just walked and we saw like all the sights. Um we did one swim, which was great, but it made us late for our train, which we missed. Oopsie. Uh, oops. And, uh, and, and that was it. And I think Ethan probably needed more swimming. And so we just overslept one day and like sleep was just a mess. Right. So yeah. I basically feel, I felt like I got on the time zone right the last night that we left. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah it takes that. like a week. I think yeah. you need like, I think you need a week to get on time zone. And then anyway, week trip, it was fun good back pedal i didn't exercise all that much i mean biking just city biking city which biking is yeah. which is totally different yeah. and then i did one run with um like uh dc rainmaker had his like open house thing and they do a run in the morning and so we went for a run and then i was running with ethan and he was like didn't was not feeling it and i was like okay i guess we're done oh yeah so yeah. that's that how was it seeing uh ray <clears throat> it was awesome yeah it was really nice yeah um I put together a video with him and it's basically uh, kind of an interview and a tour of the, his, he calls it like the DCR cave or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that should, it's, I, the video's done. It's ready to go. Um, I might just, I think I'm just going to post it on Sunday as opposed to, I think I'll post it Sunday morning. So okay. be on the lookout for that. Sweet. And, um, and I think I just kind of like go over, like, I don't remember what we, we were talking. We talked about all kinds of random stuff. Like, how do you get bikes up to your, you know, upstairs section of your studio and just like 
how, you know, tell us about this. Tell us about, you know, all the stuff. His studio is a separate mm-hmm. location from where he lives. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. He's he's big enough that he was able yeah. to rent a whole studio for all his YouTubers, reviews. Yeah. Yep. And well, what's interesting is I, I've seen this, like a couple of YouTubers that aren't nearly as big that also will do like some sort of little studio. And so he has a pretty big space. Um, Des, Des has a channel also called like Des Fit. And he was visiting as well. And uh, he and Ray had like gone to, I don't know, some islands and done some like biking and stuff like that. And then they were back. And I think Des goes every year to do like a video with Ray. And he just like, he's like pretty good friends with Ray. Like they're okay. like best buds. So he was in town. It was great to see him because I really, I mean, he's like he's one cool of my dude. favorite people. Yeah. And uh, and he doesn't, I, I think he just does all of his videos. He's got like 200,000 subscribers, d- just doesn't have a studio. He just does it all from his house, I think. He lives in Colorado? He lives in Colorado, but he also lives alone in a house and he doesn't have like crazy kids yelling yeah, at him. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, hmm. I think eventually I'll get a studio as well. I'm not going to wait until I'm Ray's size to get a studio yeah. or whatever. But I think I'm just going to wait until the kids kick me out of the house, basically. <laughs> ah. it's, it's, it's not that far from happening because, uh, yeah, I think like, I got two kids in one room. I mean, so you guys all know how this goes. Got two kids in one room, and eventually they're not going to want to share that room. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to lose the space you're using at some point Mm -hmm. in your house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get booted. I'll be coming knocking on your door, bud. Ah. (laughs) So I got an empty bedroom. Okay. I'm just. It's going to turn into a YouTube studio (laughs) slash work for software. Okay. Slash software because it's like all one thing, and it's it's kind of like half the size of this room. And so it's like, yeah. Honey, Matt is here. Again. He's here again. Can we keep it Get down? Get rid of him, please. <laughs> Can we keep it? First of all, I'll to be up. Keep it down out there. Keep it down, Heplers. I'm trying to record in here. <laughs> record in here. <laughs> yeah. Wait for it. It's happening. All right. That's a uh, backpedal for you. Did you uh, use this term with anybody? Yeah, I bent in clothes. I use it every yeah. day. Did you tell <laughs> that to the guy that was like stiff arming you? Yeah, no. I used it every day. Okay. I don't know if it went over. What language is that anyway? It's, Dutch. It's, it's Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. Okay. Had I known that, <laughs> I would have been using that every day. Nice. Uh, yeah, I flew back last yesterday, and uh, and and it was good. I thought the flights were good, but they're long. Yeah, we sat on the runway for like three hours before we started because oh. they were like de-icing, and there was like a big problems with all the de-icers or something. I don't know. So it was delayed. Mess. So ten, my ten and a half hour flight was like 14, 13 hours. <laughs> oh, it was something no. ridiculous. Wow, long flight. Yeah. but I was happy because I had like so much space and I could spread out and I could work. Oh, cool. that's good. I know. Yeah. Dylan, what you been up to, dude? Well, I spent most of the last week uh, kind of rearranging my separate studio I have for YouTubing. Yes. Which, and, you know, my third house. and all, Yes. You know, from all those YouTube dollars. <laughs> I got tired of the Picassos in there, so I put up some Van Goghs. AdSense. <laughs> Did you just, like, click that button and all of a sudden you're rolling in the yeah, dough? Should you, I don't think they have enough money to cover it, honestly. <laughs> I want to so see, I leave, I I leave see how many... How, <laughs> no. uh, I did the Oak Hill School Cyclocross in yes. Eugene. Yes. Right. Day Ooh. event. And... You know, did you I spend went, the night down there or did you go back I and did. forth? Yeah, I yeah. spent the night. Yeah. So Micah Sardell put it on with Twilight Operations, a new venue. It's a school right next to Lane Community College. Is and Micah on Group Tail? Group Trail. No, but <laughs> do you see, I, I butchered that every time. Micah is on Group Trail. No, he's on the group text. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> so it's pending. He's Group Trail he's adjacent. Pending. He's, I think he, he wears Comotion. He's want to be. Yeah. yeah. Comotion, I get it. But he, he's a, a, a member of any team that will have him. But a <laughs> great event. We were forecast two inches of rain on Saturday or more. And oh. it, it kind of didn't materialize. Or there were some in the morning and then some in the afternoon. So that the you know 1245 race was dry, uh, dry from the skies, but still muddy. And you had to go through some puddles. Mm. But then Sunday, like I still hadn't dried out from Saturday. And it just didn't stop raining. And everything that was peanut butter mud before was now six inch deep peanut butter mud. Peanut butter to soup. Yeah. And there's a part of the field where you're kind of going downhill doing S turns. And and you can see the water coming up through old gopher holes, just like spring Uh. water. (laughs) So the course turns into part river, part mud. And you just like, part fountain. I couldn't believe. Mac at whack a mole. Yeah. And when all you can see is the surface of the water, like, this should be good. And then your wheel digs in six inches because you can't see where the actual bumps are. Mm. And then, you know, there's a lot running in the mud and, yes. and a creek crossing that got, I don't know, 18 inches deep. So my bottom bracket, yoink, see ya. It's done. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was oh, no. seized. Uh, but uh, 
but then you know some of the the elite women were writing parts that that I had to like come to a complete stop and walk up and just keep coasting and use that <laughs> moment. It was insane to to witness that. But yeah, totally fun. Uh, great course. It sounds like they're gonna expand it next year. Um, yeah, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Is cross season over for you now? Are you done? It is. I came out of retirement for the, those okay. two races. And okay. yeah, this done. was kind of an added race. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. like just like six weeks ago, they decided, hey, we can do this at this venue. There'll be one more race before people go into cross nationals. So let's throw Where, it on the where's schedule. Where's cross nationals? It's in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, it's in Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. How was the Louisville. attendance down there? Uh, pretty good. I think they beat their target for, for break even. So that oh, was good. That's and great. Then, yeah. yeah. Team SM came down on Sunday. <laughs> so it's awesome to see like Portland teams coming down and yeah, showing up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I mean, with that weather forecast, like, yeah, that's true. If I wasn't committed to it, I would have been having second thoughts. But yeah. it, I mean, it was fun to get back out there. What I wasn't ready for was the, the 55 minute race. Because you like oh you did the you did the cat one two three masters yes. race and it's a fifty five so I race. Could race with my friends right and you know when I'm twenty five minutes into a race I'm looking for that one to go and the sign still says five I'm like, <laughs> what like, the oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah it's so like oh oh damage control how am I gonna last because it, it's kind of a brutally hard course there's a lot of muddy elevation. And so it's just like, okay, where am I going to have to soft pedal so I have energy for that next climb? So, yeah, my cross season was done a month ago, and and this was just kind of a fun add-on. Sweet. Yeah. That sounds fun. Yep. Um, Yes, I went to Las Vegas. I drove down. I saw some Instagram. I I spent, I only spent a week there. I didn't spend as long as I was kind of planning on because. I was like, look, I was in Europe chilling out and I was looking at your Instagram and I was telling Ethan, I was like, I just need to go bike with Lance on these trips. They're so beautiful. There's some beautiful, gorgeous stuff. Oh, that's amazing. For sure. So yeah, I mostly rode my mountain bike. Actually, I rode my mountain bike quite a bit because there's some great trails and the, the, the trails around Vegas are growing and expanding, oh, so cool. I was trying to find new stuff. Plus, there's a couple of really decent road rides in Vegas up around uh, Red Rock uh, Canyon. It's a state park. It's a national monument. I don't know. One of those things. Um, so, yeah, I spent a bunch of time riding. It was gorgeous. It was beautiful. I probably put in, I think I put in 17 hours last week, so which was quite a lot. I am kind of back into base mode for building next year doing a lot of sweet spot work for this next year because this is the right time to do all that stuff that's awesome i i'm so like i feel like that is did you see other friends while you were in vegas as well did you i was only there to see my friend ryan my friend ryan yes. lee friend of the podcast friend of the podcast yeah did, you guys i feel like each time you go to vegas you're doing something with fantasy football stuff are you done doing that or what because yep. i haven't heard our so my college friend group yeah, yeah, yeah we stayed in contact through fantasy football for 15 years we kept we played together for 15 years two years ago we all were sick of doing fantasy football they had one of those moments where they all looked at each other and like oh i only do this because i thought all you guys want to do it and they all went around the table and basically said the same thing like i don't want to do this anymore i just did it because of you guys and we, like, <laughs> we had gotten together for the draft it yeah. was like two hours before the draft and we're like why why are we still doing this? Who really wants to do this? And out of like the eight of us, only one guy raised his hand and we're like, you, that's wasn't it. it. Yeah. <laughs> did you still do the draft that year or did you just, no, we just, just it, screw got, it? it got canceled right there? We were all in town. We all like flew in or drove in to do the draft. And we're like, all right, let's go hiking. <laughs> let's that's go do something. That's else. funny. Because you guys used to have the bet too where you would Yeah, there were punishments. Uh, how yeah, you first yeah. shaved your legs. It is when I first <laughs> shaved my legs. And yep. I wasn't I didn't get the luxury of having them shaved they were waxed oh that's right yeah. I, and we 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 found we found we found a lady who would do it at a salon and we're like is it okay if we bring an audience because all eight of us walked into this salon and she waxed my legs from from Dude. soul to sack and, <laughs> oh, <laughs> soul to sack can we, can we just can we save that clip the salt to sack is saved. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're going to need to reuse that clip, please. <laughs> so Lance is a uh, cold to sack. <laughs> so, so it was pretty funny. Yes, yeah, so that was the best part is is having punishments and being able to mock and tease each other. And now we don't do that anymore. So now, yeah, we still get together a couple times a year, but it's it's not. It was like forced at least two trips together a year 
because of uh, fantasy football, and now we do it for other reasons. But, whoop, whoop. Anyway. but this was not that. This was not this that. Is, yeah. But this you will was, you will meet once with that group at some yes, point, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We and get just together, just a shave, and maybe maybe a waxing. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we get together, waxing, do a little waxing. Maybe just to have just, some fun. I don't know. Would you, would you say toast to toast to taint? <laughs> is that what it was? <laughs> is that what it was? Is that what he said? Oh, sold a sack. Sold a sack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I was thinking. I was thinking. I was way off. Toast to taint. That's just as good. <laughs> Isn't that a chili pepper song? Sold a sack. Oh, no, no, it's not. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I so it. I had I had a great time. I only went to Vegas purely because it was pouring rain here in Portland oh. and How I long drive did you I assume you drove. It's uh it's a 15 hour drive. Okay. So yeah, I drove. So I I take 2 days to drive down when I when I go to Vegas. So I only go part of the way and then sleep for the night and go the rest of the way cuz you can do that with the van. Another what three thousand miles on the adventure wagon? Um, um, probably twenty five hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a thousand. And you miles went by yourself on this trip. I went by myself. I didn't even take the dog. Um, I just took bikes and just hung out. My friend Ryan had to work every day while I was there, so I rode while he worked, and then we hung out at night. We went to a a Vegas Knights uh, NHL hockey game, which was oh. a blast. So yeah, we had a good time there. So cool. It was fun. Right on. That's it. Lots of riding. I wrote a lot. I wrote some. There was there was a ride I did like in middle of nowhere, like between the Nevada and California border, where the roads were just empty, and there was like this. Oh, I might have seen a picture of that. There was like this five mile, fifteen hundred foot climb, like over this pass in the middle of nowhere, and I'm, I was driving to. Lone Pine, California, to do some mountain biking, and I'm going over this pass, and I'm like, "What? I, I should ride this. There's mm-hmm. nobody on this road. It's perfect pavement. It's a decent climb." So I literally drove to the bottom of the climb, parked, and rode back and forth over the pass once because what, it was. How'd just... you do? How'd you do on the Strava segment? Yeah, I did okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a climb. Well, the climb. It had to put me with the descent. Maybe yeah, the a... descent. I uh, <laughs> did okay. I. I got all the KOMs on the descent, like nice. all the KOMs on the descent, but not the climb. Imagine that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, so it was good times. Good times. Anyway, cool. That's it. My turn. Yes. Please. Am I supposed to do this now? Yeah. Does anybody really want to hear what I have to say? I hope. I hope that you bike some. Uh, a little bit. I had a little bit of a regression. Mm. I, I feel speak. like you've been doing yeah. pretty well. I was uh, ramping up. I the, the week prior, I think I was talking about it on the podcast last week that I got up to about five and a half or six hours on the mm-hmm. bike. And then I was in the gym for about another three and a half, which is good. Then the next Tuesday ensued and I tried to do the team ride and had to shut it down after an hour. So that kind of sucked. Had a couple little uh, setbacks, but it is what it is. Um, but we did do the ugly Christmas water ride and that was fantastic. So okay. we were <laughs> staring down the barrel of like really bad weather. I get up at the ass crack of dawn. So I'm up that morning super early and I sit down in my den and I am, um, starting to like drink my cup of coffee and all of a sudden you just hear the wind howling. I'm like, oh, that's not good. And the next thing you know, you hear the side of the house getting pelted by rain and hail. And it was just like monsoonal coming through here. It's like, oh my Lord, are you kidding me right now? There's no way we're going to be able to do this ride. I pulled up the weather app and I looked at it and it's like, oh, it's supposed to stop at 830. I'm like, hmm, if that pans out, the ride's at nine, we should be good. Jeez. And I looked again, it, it, no joke, drove over there. I got there at 8.30, it stopped, stopped raining. And actually the clouds broke up. We had a little bit of sunshine there for about a half an hour or so. We started our ride. We went all the way to the coffee shop. We took over Compass Coffee. It was pretty funny per usual. And they were super stoked to see us and took all kinds of pictures and put it up on Do the social media. you let them know in advance that you're coming? Not this year. Maybe. There, there's good reason for that. They're not very communicative. Um, the owner of Compass Coffee, from what I'm told, isn't the most pleasant person to deal with. And I tried reaching out to them in the past before, and it wasn't very productive. So we it just seem show like up now. It'd be nice for them to know. I mean, so I'll do this with my cross country team. I'll just be like, "Hey, we're showing up yeah. for whatever it is, and we're gonna have like a team of." Yeah, I, I I usually do that, but it falls on deaf ears when you try and reach out to that particular yeah. coffee coffee company. Like we've gone to Hidden River Roasters before. We've done it with them. We've done it with Relevant Coffee. Yeah. The first two years I tried doing it with Compass Coffee, they just they didn't respond, and I don't know, just whatever. Anyway, so we showed up, we did a bunch of coffee, hung out there for like a half an hour, rode back, and got out of the, uh, got off the saddle, got all the bikes put away. Ten minutes later, rain starts coming out of the sky. So it what? was like perfectly timed. It was a thing of beauty. So wow. um, we had a really good turnout. I think we had 
maybe close to 30 people. And there was probably another 15 or ish people that had RSVP that they were going to go that didn't go because they thought the weather was going to be terrible. So it was, uh, it was a good time. Cool. And then other than that, I am just slowly, surely trying to back away doing all this other crap to get my Have you better. been lifting any? Yes. I have not missed um, a workout in a month and a half now. How's, I, ba- how's Bear doing on the lifting? He's doing really well. And he and I are actually having a lot of fun doing this together. So it's been a you know, good father-son thing to do together. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of fun like watching him like learn and go through the process and like, actually start to see results. And like he's like six weeks into it and he's actually starting to get pretty strong now, which is great. It won't be long at all. Like he'll just like take off and be super strong. It's just, these yeah. kids are amazing yeah. how fast they I mean, recover. He's and 14 and a half, um, but he's he's as tall as I am now. He's six foot, I think. He's you know big Jeez. kid, and he's just a, he's a beanpole. So like when we first got started, he was at like 132 pounds. I think he's almost 140 now. So if we can get him up to about 155, 160 pounds by the start of his football season, um, he'll be a stoked uh, little, little guy. So he wants to play a little bit of defense and a little safety cornerback and possibly do a little bit of uh, – what does he want to do? Wide receiver, and he's going to be doing some special team stuff, and then oh, they're fun. they're kind of working with him on being a punter too. But we'll see. It should be good. So anyway, are you tired of telling your friend Jake to shut up here? Oh, shut, shut up, Jake! Shut up, Jake! Shut up, Jake! I'm sorry. I'll shut up now. Thank All right. Goodness. Jeez. <laughs> Champ Alley in sports. Champ here. All right. Champ is here. Into a car windshield and then take your mother, Dorothy. Dorothy. That's my favorite part. Dinner and never call her again. You leave All Dorothy right. out of this. You leave Dorothy out of this. Wow. That's something. something. She treated me right. <laughs> <laughs> what up, Champ? Okay. I don't have a whole lot to talk about. There was some World Cup cyclocross racing that sure. happened this last week. There was a race in Flamaville. I oh, yes. said that wrong. France. That's not a real place. In It's in Normandy, France, in the Normandy okay. area. Um, Ellie Easterbeet won that. It was kind of muddy and nasty, and Lucinda Brand won the other side. Um, other than that, I, there's not a whole lot more to talk about. There's a super prestige race that happened that, uh, you know, some pros won and some pros lost. And whatnot. Come on, champ. So the other big thing is we have cyclocross there nationals you go. There happening. You go. Yes. Um, the, the age group races have all been happening Actually, this on what day is today? Today's Friday. It was happening on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So, like the Masters age group racing all happened on Wednesday, Thursday. As far as I know, there were no Obra champions in any of the age group races. I think the best hope we had was probably Paul Borsier. Paul Borsier ended and up 12th. He got. I think somebody like took out a derailleur or something or a, well, a valve stem. That's what it was. Yeah, something like he, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. He and right in the first lap, he he muffed a step and it messed up his derailleur. He was there able to fix that. And half a lap later, somebody whacked his bike on a dismount and wiped his valve stem off. It was like oh. clean off. Clean so. off. So, so he had to run to the pit, get his pit bike, and then. But at that point, he's in. You know. 30th out of 40 people and and he was able to work himself back up to 12th so. besides people by the name of clara is there anybody else who has hope or promise of landing on the podium this weekend well um there is our teammate whitney hayden she yeah. is racing in the 11 12 12 13 12 13 yeah something like that i think she's going 12 13 she races saturday morning um, you might be right. It might be the 11-12s because I think she's like last year she was like on the young end of it, and the girl that the girls that beat her were like on the you know the older side yeah. of things, and they 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 handled their business. So I think this year she's kind of stoked because she's the older one now, and she's she's got some talent. Yeah. So so she has uh, she has some real hope to land on the podium for yep. that race. She races tomorrow. Um, who, we're hoping that Clara Hansinger actually... Um, your fourth year in a row? It'll be her fourth year in a row if she wins again. She's probably the favorite, but it is not a, just a gimme. Oh, never is, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Coco Laritz is a 15-year-old, I believe. Yeah. Um, and if she's got a shot to land on the podium as well um, in her age group. Um, and there was only about 10 people from Obra Land Ian going. Ian Brown going? Ian Brown already raced. Oh, didn't he raced in the collegiate ranks? Oh, he did. So he raced the he's collegiate. He's in college now. He's in college. Well, I guess that makes sense because he was racing against Hayden Wehrman, and yeah, never mind. Hayden's like a junior in college. Anyway, um, time's flying by. Ian is in Durango, Colorado. Uh-huh. He is. Uh, he's at the school that's there, so he's with a great team. He's like, 
I think he was 12th or 13th in the collegiate varsity race, okay. Ian Brown. So he's already there. His father, Michael Brown, is also going, but um, he must have raced yesterday. I don't know what his results all right. were. Yeah, we can run through all that next week. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, so that's all I know about Cross Nats. The elite race, the women are Sunday morning-ish, and the men are Sunday afternoon. Um, I believe the single speed races are tomorrow, Saturday. Men's and women's single speed races are tomorrow. And some of the junior races are before that. So there's some exciting stuff happening. You can watch it on Flow Sports. They're they're live streaming the entire day. I hate Flow Sports. I know. Uh, so Flow Sports is, is live streaming the entire day on, on Saturday and Sunday. So you can watch their live stream on Saturday and Sunday if you have Flow Sports. Do they have commentary on Flow Sports? Or is it just the, the TV stream? I have no idea. I don't. I, my guess is that there's no commentary for the live stream, and and I don't. It's not going to be like. It's not going to be good coverage. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Can you read that number? <laughs> no, <Nope>. no. <laughs> but at least it'll be something if you want to try to watch Jersey, it. Jersey <laughs> being chased by the red one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it should be pretty interesting. I know it, it has been it, on Instagram. USA Cycling. Um, they have been. They have been doing short reels interviewing the winner of each each individual like Smart. age group race. So just like a one minute or 40 second interview and you're and catching them right after the finish. So you get all the emotion and the excitement. And so you can watch who won the races, not the actual race, but at least the post race interview on USA Cycling's Instagram account. All right. So that's one place that you can get there and know that. Very uh, cool. I think that's it. I don't know if anything else. Champ out. Champ. Champ out. <laughs> you can't. You can't have the champ out clip on the video. Oh yeah. You. Yeah. Jake was. Re- Jake was uh, recording. It's too, it's too behind the scenes. We don't. No one knows who the real champ Bailey is. In a I, video I, of it, there, there's, I've got, put I got skills. On. I can make that happen. You can edit. Oh yeah, and Photoshop. Oh. Photoshop oh. that out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll roto out his head, and we'll we'll, we'll do something. Okay. Wow. We we can fix all, all this in post. Please. A lot of, okay. Please <laughs> fix, fix all this of this in post. There you go. Put little. Dylan's head on my body. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that might just happen. <laughs> Both of us have that dream. <laughs> oh boy. Stay tuned. Um. We're already getting too long, so we're going to like punt on anything else, and we're going to jump right into it. Let's do our topic for the day, but before we truly get into the topic, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about, and it's a little video called Trophy Cup Unchained. It's oh, it's, oh, it's interesting because this is some serious black market stuff. Like This was... <laughs> And a lot of people don't know this. I mean, that go on YouTube and things like that. But like sometimes illegal content gets like stolen, released, and just like unapproved content <laughs> makes its way onto YouTube. YouTube doesn't snag it for whatever reason, but it's there, and it's like pretty interesting stuff because yeah, you got to click it before it gets taken down. <laughs> yes, I mean uh, Netflix is probably. They're gonna. It'll. It'll. It's going. It's going down. I'm gonna frame that cease and desist later. later. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you did. You used the Netflix logo. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> did I do that? <laughs> Allegedly. Beginning. Allegedly, <laughs> you used something that looked like a red N. Yeah. That's mm. all I know. Dylan, what Yo, the ice cream sandwich <laughs> is going on here? Where did that come from, and why is it so freaking awesome? Jake, that's an excellent question. Thank you for asking, and thank you. For- for uh, having me back on here, uh, because I believe <laughs> the all. idea for that video happened in this very room. Did it really? Last time. Mm. Uh. It was a little egg of an idea that you then fertilized. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it so you it your it. brain, huh? <laughs> What's happening on this podcast? Sold yeah. sack. Toast a tank. <laughs> Sold a sack. <laughs> Sold a sack. <laughs> I think we talked about video ideas last time. And that was kind of a, oh, yeah, no, Netflix is doing a series. How hard could that be? <laughs> and then I started thinking about it. I was like, no, that that might be doable. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, I went into it thinking this will take two weeks tops. And it did not take two weeks. Right. It took a lot more time. It took a lot more Cliff Notes that. version, tell us what happened from start to finish. How did that all come together and what was the process like? And yeah, just mm. close it out. Okay. Uh, I mean, short version, I looked at, you know, there's that 
Netflix series Tour de France Unchained, which yeah, is yeah. incredible if you haven't seen it. And it's so intense and, the, you know, the soundtrack and everything. And I have it, lots of questions. Okay. Because th- this is one of the best things that I've seen in a very long time. Like the quality of video and the quality of edit is blows my mind. Like it's so good. Did you watch the the net, the documentary on Netflix and then try to match some of the cuts and some of the sound design and some of like the, I mean, it's just so good. No joke behind the scenes. And I'm just going to say it how it is. We're all going, what the F can't this guy do? I mean, know, I wish I could <laughs> take credit for that because, you know, it'd be amazing to be like, oh yeah, no, this is my first time. I'm just perfect at everything. Uh, <laughs> but I literally took an episode of Tour de France Unchained That's and what broke I it do. up scene by scene and gave myself markers. Okay, you know, they start talking here, but the scene changes here. Yeah. And then I need an establishing shot, a close up shot, atmosphere shot. And like, yeah. So I, I broke it down real hard. Like, what is this episode? Gotcha. Yeah. And that. I don't have, you know, the Wout Van Art tour bus and scenes like that. But I'm like, okay, so if I didn't have that, you know, what would this person be saying? Right. And right. so I started, I was like, how do you write a screenplay? I don't know. Here's some free software. So I started <laughs> and like literally just take the transcription of that episode and dump it in here and be and like, then, okay, here's a bit about Tour de France. Let me change that or take yeah, out a few yeah, words. Yeah. So it starts out like, you know, if you play it with the episode, it's one to one. It's exact yes! match. But I think that <laughs> that's like, okay, so this is what I do too. Like any video of mine that's good is just copied yeah. off of someone else where it's just like, Oh, how do I like this is really well done. It's really like I love how they've done this piece and this. It's just like I'm just gonna do that. And this is like my favorite videos that they come out so well. And it's like I think this is the learning process of like copy until you can do it yourself. And so like there's a book what steal like an artist. Yeah. Which I I made a copy of. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna steal that. I'm gonna steal that book. (laughs) Uh but yeah, so uh you know, starting with um what what do the camera shots look like? Yep. And and you know what what's the scenery? When do they use slow motion? Uh, you know what are they doing for f stops? Everything is super shallow depth of focus. Like mm-hmm. cool, I can I can do that part. I know that part. Um, we're gonna need and there's like tons this of is like a master footage. class of how to make a documentary. It's really good. If you guys what, right now like. I, I hate to tell people to pause the podcast. Pause the podcast. Watch this video. You've just heard the sound of a single click. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 to me. It's like I I would study your documentary piece and be like, okay, so this is how to do this, and like I would do the same thing to yours. Like how to, I would steal how to rip off. I mean, go watch the, the Tour was, de France one. But uh, you know, you start. I think yours is better. Mm, well, because it's local. Because right? it's local, it's, but it's, it's relevant. It's funny. Yeah. Is all get out. It is funny. And that's so well, much better than the Tour de France. Oh, you know what? We missed we missed an opportunity. Steven should be here right now. <laughs> we should have brought <laughs> Steven Plomer. Steven it's Stefan. Is he go by Stefan or Steven? Steven. Steve.de. Okay. Yeah. He, he, I won't say it. Uh <laughs> but uh, um He's the German. He's from he's from Germany. He's been in so Portland weird. for like three years or something okay. like that. Than that. Um uh, yeah, so dude, he's amazing. He but, is amazing. But um um so once I, you know, once I had the first minute of the video kind of mapped out, like, here's the look and feel. It's like, oh, no, I actually need a script. Like, like these <laughs> things, you know, when it's a true documentary, you know, you're just film it. You cast your net wide and then you figure out how yeah, you want to tell the, the story later. later. Yeah. Because yeah. you see what happened. But I was like, oh, I don't have that luxury. I can't just go film everyone at Trophy Cup and figure out a storyline. Right. I need to go into this with the thing. So... You know, I wrote a quick script and it was bad. It was real bad uh, <laughs> as first drafts go. And I didn't really change it. Like the second draft wasn't much better, but, it, you know, move some stuff around and fix some lines, whatever. I'm like, cool. We got we got the basic bones of a thing. And there's a Lance Hepler. Like you were written in from the start. Oh, no. <laughs> from the start. <laughs> You're needed. It was all about Lance. It was all about yeah. Yeah. Uh But then, you know, it's okay. I, you know, there's six weeks of Trophy Cup. I need to be shooting every night, just like start putting together my shot list. I need, you know, these kind of shots, these crowd shots, close up of bikes, race footage, race footage of the people in the film, because yeah. without that, you don't have anything. And then, you know, the the one on one interviews, which I thought are fun because you know, when Netflix does it, they have a pro lighting setup, yeah. pro backgrounds like, oh, I don't have that. So, so now I you just come steal from Jake. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> But so, then, so, so how did you do that? Did you 
did you just get people under lights kind of or yeah i have like you know a single ring light and then a, a terrible gray background and two cameras like, cool, you can go back and forth and, and kind of chop it up that way. This it, sounds like a big project. Here's the problem is that, you know, the scheduling that was like, oh, I have to actually like make time for these shoots and everyone's good. Okay, so once that's out of the way and I start doing the first, you know, one-on-one interview shot, um, you know, again, it's one thing if you're just like, tell us about cycling and about your whole world and right. your life. Another is read scripted. this line, <laughs> but make it sound like you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And so the how first, was that process? Because you didn't uh, have actors, you had and, and no plants. directing experience. Well, <laughs> yeah. And the first one but was this my is, friend. Jordan. Like I said, this is a master's class. Yeah. You're learning all of it. So I went to my friend Caitlin and Jordan's house. They are not cyclists at all. Uh-huh. They are, uh, you know, theater kids oh. for life. And, she, and Caitlin is a very good director and Jordan's yeah, acting experience. You so, used to like work or volunteer at the theater yeah. thing. So you have, you know, people doing like photo, but I, I'm, you know, I'm not a theater guy. Right. So I set up the cameras. I'm like, okay, I think we look good. You know, I can't look through both cameras. So one of them was out of focus, which kills me in, in yeah, post. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what? Did I it go into, that. did it make it into the video? Oh, yeah. And it was on, yeah, on, out of focus. I feel yeah. like some, that sometimes just adds a little bit of character. Like My it's, standards went lower and lower and lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're <laughs> but, like, it's late. But the things of like, okay, you know, here's a line for you to read. And it's kind of a long line. Right. Um, and this is the intensity. And I have, you know, the example from the show, like, match this guy, you know, the leader of you know, um, FDJ. Sure. And, and like, he took a stab at it. It's like, okay, that was just, you know, a guy reading a line. Yeah. Like, how do I, how do I get this actor to do this thing? And Caitlin steps in with directing experience. Oh, like, you know, before you read the line, do this or, you know, say this out loud or, you know, get this emotion or think this. And this is your backstory. And like, like just breathe wow. life into this and like, get that's that. so, like, so cool. So and the whole time, like, oh, more of that, please. How do I do that? <laughs> so I got to witness this, you know, actual dramatic thing happening with yeah. acting and coaching. It's like, oh, like, I don't know anything about this. I need, I need her to like, Come teach me everything yeah. that she knows. That so we- like, okay, what would she? What would Caitlin do for this actor to get this line? So then, when I when I sat down with Kevin Ryan or Stephen Plomer, you're like, okay, you know, that was a great read, but mm, I don't know, <laughs> do it better. That was a great read, <laughs> except for it, it completely better. sucked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got to start stop with, looking start, at the camera. Say one thing positive, and then come in with the, what you really feel, and then end with something positive. Yeah, it's a really great read. It was. We're not going to use any of that because it was horrible. <laughs> But good practice. It's perfect. No notes, <laughs> but I have a note. <laughs> couple, couple suggestions. Couple suggestions. Yeah, and then um, you know, with all the the one on one interviews, like yeah. cool. So I'm just banking that footage, and you know, I put together a little proof of concept after the first Trophy Cup night and with stolen music from their show. Like, okay, this is this is the look and feel. Like, this is working. Because if that didn't work, it'd be like, there's no point in putting more time into this. Like, I can't do it. Uh, Where did what did you do with that? With that rough, I mean, it wasn't a rough cut with the with with your like demo piece. Did you just like watch it yourself? Did you show it to your teammates? Did you show it to your wife? Like, what's the deal? I Would, showed it to a couple friends, and they were all like, "Whoa, cool! Yes, that's a reaction. That's that's the correct response." Did you yeah. did you send it to them or yeah? Just, like, well, fire I mean, like phone. unlisted YouTube, perfect, okay, secret YouTube. I got to see a copy of that. Did you? And you said this sucks. Shut it down immediately. <laughs> Shut her down. Shut her down. Not people. at all. Netflix did it better. <laughs> So with the, you know, six weeks of Trophy Cup, and I was trying to race in the middle of it, so I can get daylight footage or I can get night footage, but nothing really in between. Yeah. So, like, it's so hard to do both. But I was like, I don't want to get out of shape making this. Like, I still want to do the race and have the fun. But, are you going to uh, be a racer or are you going to be a filmmaker, Dylan? No, uh, I'm going to suck at both. <laughs> I'm just going to suck it. But both. imagine, so there's one night where it looked like it was going to rain. Like, yes, this is the depressing, moody rain shot, and it didn't actually rain. Oh. Or when it did have a couple raindrops, I didn't have the cameras out. And then one more night where it's like, I just need to show up and film, even though I don't feel well, I'm not going to race. And that was the night I show up and I forgot all my cameras. Oh, uh, Lance has burned all his matches. <laughs> Lance has burned all his matches. Yeah. So did, you, of, did of, you ever get there and you're like, and this no memory, forgot my memory card, forgot my camera battery, forgot whole, my blah 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 blah. The whole first night like a checklist or something where to, was you know was proof of concept filming, like do all these long shots, like slow mo and everything, yeah. put to music. Does that work or not? I didn't bring a tripod. I, I brought a monopod. Oh, okay. So all you see is camera shake back and forth because you can't like it's not a steady platform. 
Okay. Especially with, you know, 300 millimeter lens. It's just yeah. All uh, you see is shake. No, but it looked good. Well, because you don't see any of those shots. Oh, so in my gotcha. mind, I've already got, you know, shots of lines up for registration and some crowd shots. And then sure. when I go back and try and use them, I was like, oh, this is not good. These aren't usable. Couldn't stabilize in post? Dude, uh, a little bit. But, and there's a couple of shots in there that are stabilized in post. Yeah. And you can kind of see it. Like everything kind of twitches yeah, a little bit. but you don't want everything on a gimbal. You want it, like that kind of gives it a little bit of life. Like you're there. Like you feel that movement and that like it associates with what's happening. So yes. I don't know. And, and the real reason is. You know, that shake tells a story, Jake. Yes. So you don't want that in every shot. But you want to, yeah. It's, yeah. Mm. it's like the, yeah, there's there's sh- good shake and then there's bad shake. Yeah, yeah. It's a little, such a, a little salt on it, yeah. I feel like you could lock <laughs> off a shot and then add add that little bit of shake in post and have it perfect. But yeah, mm. that's probably the better way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Because I have problems with like video where it shakes. I'm like, that's not a good look. Nah. I got that. Ah, yeah. It's all good. But um, yeah, so after, after, Footage was done. I'm like, cool. Like, there might be one week left of Trophy Cup. I need to start putting together the rough edit. And I didn't realize how much time that would take. Dude, the edit and, took forever. And while I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this doesn't work. Like, in this order, as it's scripted, this doesn't work. Yeah. So I'm moving things around. And they're like, okay, do I have a shot? Like, I really want a shot of you know people lined up like this. I don't have it. Oh, I need a shot of them finishing a race. I don't have that. And you can't just, like... <laughs> Fake, fake footage. it and just yeah. put a race on. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, I had generic footage of people finishing and a checkered flag, yeah. but it was like a, such a boring angle. It was like, ugh, like yeah. ugh, I can't use that. So. But you had a shot list for everything yes. you wanted, yeah. plus some. Yeah. But like you it, missed putting some things on the shot list that you didn't think you would need. Like you go back and yeah. you sit down, you're proofing it, you're watching uh, it, and you're okay. like, there's just, it's so missing. during the edit yeah. Is when you're, okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And so, I mean, it's a big compromise. You know, the whole the whole video is a series of compromises. Like, I don't have the thing I want. Here's the next best thing. Is this going to work? Oh, this only works if I move this around a little yeah. bit. There was supposed to be another interview part or two in there. That was like, I don't have time for this. Yeah. So, yeah, it was uh, a lot going of compromises. Going back to the edit, how long did you spend sitting in front of a computer going through that, watching it over and over again and making all of your, et- your edits? I bet you did pretty I've, well. Because I've seen it so many times. Here's the thing. Well, like, I bet you did pretty well because he had he had seen the documentary. He had a shot list. He knew what he was going to make. He knew how the edit was going to go because he had seen the documentary. So it's almost like put the puzzle pieces together a little bit. There yeah. is that, but I get the sense that this guy, he's a perfectionist. I mean, you're a, you're a painter. It, you're an is, artist. You're, it is and, good. and you need things to be a certain way. Otherwise, you're going to just be pissed at yourself that you didn't do it right. Correct. And then you're going to go back <laughs> and just watch it again and again. You're going to be making the tweaks. And, that, and the next thing you know, you look over and like, I've just spent 40 hours working on this. 12 minute video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I bet you 40 hours yeah, like, at least. Probably, um, probably about right. And like, mm, we'll get well, into that edit. because the Netflix editor, like when you look at those shots, like here's a four second establishing shot. Yeah. Here's a three second crowd shot. Yeah. Here's a couple two seconds slow motion. Like, sure. Everything is broken up into chunks and is pretty, yeah. pretty clean cuts. It's like, okay, that's my format for every scene. And there's kind of like four chapters in it, mm-hmm. like race nights. And yeah. So I was like, cool. That's my template going forward. And then, once I locked in the music, which is a whole nother story, That's like time now I'm like going back to the edit. Can I move stuff around? This shot needs to be shorter, but then the music doesn't line up here. So it was did like, you, cool, I'm locked in. Okay. So music, did you use a music service of some sort? No, I, so you can get the soundtrack on Spotify for the, the Netflix series, which is awesome in its own right, because it's um, one guy it's, with synthesizers. And your doing a your video is totally getting flagged. <laughs> I used their music for the draft. Okay. And then I went in one song, like song by song, recreating them with my own gear. What? Like, Wait, what? You made your own music? This is all original what? music, but it's Why? all like rip off copies. Me? Because I would <laughs> hear it. to be like, like 10% like, different or something like that? <laughs> you, hear, you hear like that rhythmic synth, like, and then like, oh, here's this airy thing coming in here. Here's a you know bass line, and then maybe some strings. I'll be like, Oh, that's like five or six parts. I can do that. <laughs> or I lay down one. It's like that's pretty close. Yeah. Let's layer the other one. Oh yeah. And you know you have this Dude, part. You, you are a do, champion. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. a the it's, it's a lot of rhythmic drone like whatever music that they do for a lot of the documentaries. However, you did it yourself. I mean, like yeah. it's amazing that you can do that. <laughs> well, thank you. you. But when, when when the Netflix the guy did hell? it, Cy Beg. Like you can see his workstation. He's got sixty four tracks, and yeah. they're all over the place. I'm like, mm, I got six. This will yeah. have to do. This is close enough, dude. It it, it 
it killed. It was awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah. The, that. the lighting looks good to me. Up. Like, look at this shot right here. Like, it's a dramatic lighting, which is what you want, right? Like, I mean, this is just. Like, oh, that's Lance. That's Fast Lance. forward. Hold on. Let's <laughs> yeah. Don't well, look like, at my face. Here's your, here's that, like, talking head shot or whatever. And that's just like, lighting looks perfect. Well, thank you. Because the color grading on those things, I don't know how to color grade either. And so, like, just I have. Just slap a light on the, it. You're good to go. I have the screenshot of yeah. the Tour de France thing. And this one, I'm like, mm, you, how do we match? What camera did you use? Uh, with Nikon D500. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, you, with just a, a crappy LED ring light. Yeah. Hmm. It's oh, it's really good. Thank you. It's Thank proof you. positive that you don't need to go spend a bunch of money no. on stuff to make something cool. I mean, you've got I mean, nice gear, but camera, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just like, just a ring light and you got a nice camera lens, some glass and, and that's all you need. Yeah. And, like, and an amazing <laughs> script. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think that that's like, no joke, the real thing. Like, cause and no one cares well, about the actor. Kevin Wright, you can take him or leave him, but yeah, no, right. he's incredible. It was just like, it's like, we need to get that face on camera. Yep. It was just so <laughs> funny the whole time. So if somebody wants to go watch this, Lance, why don't you tell them where they can go? Well, you can go, go, to, go to the dark web. Read the whole URL. <laughs> read the whole URL. I can't do so it. So that's what the best part. One of the little, I mean, it's like these little things. Like it's called trophy.cup.unchained.com. S01 <laughs> E01.1080p. There's going to be a whole season. H264 <laughs> slash edit H dot MKV, which sa- seems like it was ripped off of it, like the documentary that's going to go on Netflix. talking about. That's going to go on Netflix. So <laughs> it looks like every part of it looks like it was like, yep, this was really from this really from Netflix. It's really ripped off. And it, this guy, Quatface too, post just posted it, stole yeah. it and posted. So the only thing I actually, that is <clears throat> the only thing I allegedly took from Netflix is their logo at the front, which and maybe did it you says the, the boom boom you can part. take that because it's a yeah. parody. So you're, uh, you're good to boom. go. It falls. <laughs> you're, high, you're my yeah. lawyer now. You're my lawyer now. <laughs> um, I got deemed his lawyer and his uh, yes. CPA today. I, I, think it could, I think it could get flagged still. It's a uh, parody, but... It's a full-on parody. We'll find out. That's true. Bring it. Bring it, Netflix. So this is on Dylan's uh, YouTube page. If you just Google Trophy Cup Unchained, it okay. should it should or pop up. Or go to up. YouTube and, and search there, too. Yeah, or go to YouTube and search <laughs> Second Trophy largest, Cup Unchained. Uh, search Unchained. engine on the planet, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And for the, for the channel subscribers, don't worry. We're back to low-quality content. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it won't happen again. So you can go to Quap Phase 2. It's uh, C-W-A-P. F A C E, the number two, and that's uh, your just YouTube channel. Do yourself a favor channel. and subscribe. Yeah, just don't. Mm. Just step one: subscribe, turn on notifications, and you will be pleased. We need to have you have more than two hundred and thirty-five subscribers. Yes, I, kick, <laughs> I can need, kick some out, and make some room, we can put a couple more zeros behind <laughs> this. So come exclusive. on, people, come on through. His content is hilarious. He's got some cool race videos going on there. I the ones that you do with your buddies, where you guys get together, like the old bone broth and a few oh, of those. Geez. Those things are just comedy. They're yeah, fun yeah. to watch. So, your Good trainer material is it your friend? Is it Brandon? That's the Which, the the musician. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Brandon DeCoster. Does do you yeah. still are you guys still friends? He's or dead to me. Dead no, you? <laughs> he's been out. Of, the thing is, he's so good at music. Yeah. That if I ask him to you know contribute to a soundtrack or do a thing, then I can't get involved. I because oh, I'm getting in the way. He's yeah. so good. And so I'm like, I don't even call him for this. Like, I want to, I want to be able well, to do this. You, the one, that I'm, I'm not saying that you should have done the trophy cup thing different. I think you nailed that. But just have him come on because it's funny. His his songs, his little jingles, he's very, they're funny. hilarious. Yeah, so, very but yeah, go check out his uh, YouTube page. It's fantastic. So, cool. Anything else you guys want to talk about with respect to uh, that? No, I loved it. All I, right. I, thank you for letting me be a part of it, Dylan. It was thanks it for was, saying yes. It was also, fun. And thank you to everyone involved with the project because everyone I approached about it said, "Oh yeah, how can I help?" Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like, just immediately. Yes, even, I'm in. I mean, with Stephen Plummer, like, okay, we're gonna, yeah, you know, you're gonna speak German, and, and you're just, gonna, and he's, you're gonna kind of be the bad guy. So you, you got to be the antagonist. A, in this I thing. am down to clown. <laughs> 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 now, did you go and actually translate what he said? Did he say what you? Told him to say, or did he say something else? Like, are the Germans like looking at us saying, What a bunch of dumbass <laughs> Americans? You can open up Google Translate and uh-huh. hold your phone to the speakers and find out what he's actually saying. Really? And I'm not going to say any more about it. <laughs> oh, here we go. So it's not the same. <laughs> I was wondering if there was maybe something in there, but there's your little Easter egg. Yeah. So cool. Uh, I'm proud of you. You know that. I hope you do. <laughs> proud of you, my man. 
<laughs> right on. Let's jump into our topic today, and that is uh, what is that? What would you name your segment over there, Mister? Uh, the Fiston? dome seat. I mean, the hotter seat. What the is hotter, that? Seat? What is the hotter <laughs> seat. The more the more hotter seat. <laughs> the lukewarm seat. <laughs> this is called Pop Quiz with Dylan. All right. Pop Quiz, I'm, Pop Quiz with Dylan. This oh. is kind of related to, oh, do you have a soundbite for it? No. We'll leave room for it. We, we can't. <laughs> da, 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 da. Post baby, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it. Uh, this is kind of related to a discussion you guys had a few weeks ago um, about road rage. Mm, everyone's favorite topic. Yeah. So, and, and I'll start my question with a story about, you know, every time I bike on public streets, I'm kind of just braced for who's going to irritate me. What car am I going to see parked in a bike lane or, you know, what dumb stuff am I going to like, who's going to try and right hook me? How do you, um, first of all, when you're considering your reaction to that, because we'd all want to, you know, knock on a door or yell something. Do you consider what team kit you're wearing or how you're representing (laughs) anyone before you do this? And then the second part is, how do you let it not ruin your day? Uh, it's a pretty hot, hot question. Seat. Hot seat. Um, <laughs> I don't think too much about Jersey stuff, but I, I, the one thing I try to do is be like, okay, this you know, big pickup truck is going to, whatever I say, they're going to pass a, another cyclist in about you know 30 minutes, right? And what are they going to do to that cyclist? So... Um, Jake does this too. I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never seen either of these guys that are sitting at this table, like cause, cause a problem or cause a scene. I've seen other people do that. And that's funny and fun to watch from a distance. Cause you know, it can end up in a fight, but like, I always feel like the best thing to do is like kind of kill them with kindness and, um, hope that they don't kill the next cyclist that they see. It's hard. It, to, it is really hard because a lot of times all you're going to do is piss somebody off and it's just going to propagate it further down the road. But I am going to full transparency. I have a, I have approached a few people. Um, I just just recently, I can think of somebody. We were doing our, our Friday Fog Hat ride. It was a very chill ride. We had a bunch of juniors with us. We had a big group. It was probably 25 or 30 people. And we were riding down a neighborhood road. It was not even like a major thoroughfare or anything like that. It was like we're in a neighborhood. And everybody was pretty far to the right, being respectful. And some guy comes flying through in his uh, BMW and almost clipped one of our kids. And then like, like just was being a complete egregious a-hole. And then hangs a left. And I... I jumped on the pedals and I chased him down and I, I, I made him stop. I mean, it was funny because, um, one of our teammates is, uh, was uh, it like a high schooler kind of per- like younger? No, he was probably mid thirties like- or something like that. Anyway, he was just being a complete asshole. And, um, I, 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 he was going up to his house and I, I rode up there and I, I kind of got in his face a little bit. And our teammate, Dustin, who's a, a police officer, he came up just to make sure nothing was going to be a problem. He, that's just how Dustin is. He's a good dude. But, you know, I'm like, dude, what is your problem? He's like, you guys should not be riding on the road. And I'm like, you know that those are a bunch of kids. Those are like 13 and 14 year old kids. And you almost hit one of them. And he's like, just belly aching at me. I'm like, dude, you need to check yourself. Nobody's out here to cause you harm, and we didn't put you out at all. You don't need to drive like that. And basically, I didn't want to like take it any further than that. He wasn't going to be receptive to that, so I just I said my piece and I said I have a good rest of your day. Just please be careful in the future and um, rode away. But you know, it, it very well could have been one of those things. Like if if it was somebody else that was a little bit more excitable, that could have been a situation where the bike just laid down on the ground and people are like you know, <laughs> fisticuffs and like little you know. Knock down, drag out, fight. I mean, do that, you rip the sleeves off your jersey before you do that? <laughs> so you can flex. Yeah, yeah you can. Hell yeah. <laughs> Wrestle them in a in a singlet. <laughs> so, but anyway, I mean, there's been a few things like that, but more times than not, it's cooler heads need to prevail. And if you get an opportunity to say, "Hey, can can you tell me what what happened back there? Did I do something wrong or, or whatever?" and try and open up the dialogue just to see what they have to say and just you know educate them like, "Hey, just you know." It, that didn't need to happen. You know, we'll try and do better, but you can do better too. And, you know, just don't be an asshole and you're going to hurt somebody. I mean, all these people, they're somebody's, you know, brother, sister, mother, father, son, daughter, whatever. It's, we're humans. We're people. We're not just some like, you know, inanimate object riding on a bike that's getting in your way. And it's not like we're truly inconveniencing you. You've got this massive vehicle with a thing called an accelerator that you can get back up to speed in no time at all. If I inconvenienced you for two, three, five seconds, whatever, so what? deal with it so but anyway carry on sorry no uh lance. i appreciate your answer you're you're here's lance's answer 
I try to go past the problem as fast as possible <laughs> so that the people behind me have to deal with the problem. You know, I've been able to sit here and think about this for a minute and really <laughs> think about what I actually do. Pretty- and I'm, I'm better in a group than when I'm alone. When I'm mm. with a group, I tend to be the cooler head. Like, just let it ride. It's not worth the fight, whatnot. But I realize when I'm riding alone, and I'm always in a dialed jersey, I'm always in a bright orange jersey, it's probably not a good look that I'm always in the jersey. But I'm also trying to promote the team, and I also tear down the team at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Double whammy. <laughs> but when I'm alone, if somebody, if somebody buzzes me or right hooks me, I immediately, like, Mother effort. Yeah. <laughs> want to kill them. I want to kill them. And and I will I will approach them if there's a chance to approach them. Or I'll yell something to the door. But I'm also very non confrontational. So I'll like I'll yell something and if they roll down the window, I'm like, I just need to ride away before something happens or I get murdered by this idiot. So you ever I'm, use your uh, water bottle? I have never done that. I've done that with dogs. dogs. Yeah, so good for dogs. I did I mean. it with dogs, but I haven't done that to a person because I I imagine if I do that, then they're just gonna mow me down in their in their <laughs> Ford F one fifty. You know, I'll I'll stick well, you that's with too scratch. bad. You guys were close, but y'all got it wrong. Sorry. The correct answer was always escalate. Always <laughs> escalate. You got to rip the glass out of the passenger mirror and throw Ooh, it down yeah. and say, "Don't need this, do you?" I think <laughs> Evan Price has done that before. Like he was like riding along, and there was like a car, and he like ripped off their. Ripped mirror. off the mirror, oh, the whole like side mirror. Wow! You have to ask Evan Price about that story. <laughs> Holy moly! Uh, wow! All right, what's next? Okay, what advice would you give to a cyclist that wants to get stronger and is on the trainer and planning to be on the trainer? Maybe just bought a new trainer for the winter Ooh. and has done a couple Zwift workouts, maybe done Trainer Road, and has realized this sucks. Riding for an hour on the trainer is hard. And when you get on with trainer road, every workout's hard. Why would I want to do this all winter? What What would you say to, when you know in the spring, they're going to want to be able to hang with all their friends that are riding year round. Do it with others. You have to do it with other people. Mm. It's, it's like, way more motivating if you do it in a group or with others. We'll Much do more our, motivating. It, we do our bad. Tuesday night rides. And oh yeah, that's true. That does help. And we're usually on there. It's, it's, we're back 15, 17 people or something like that right now. And no joke, if you go do that same ride by yourself, it feels like it's it's an hour and a half, but it feels like it's three hours. But if you do it with a group and we're talking to each other on Discord, you can see what's going on. We know that there's a hot section coming up. We you know There's a protocol for the whole thing. It feels like you're on there for 30 minutes. It really does eat up the time. So there's that. Then the other thing is um, try a race or two yeah. or go ride with other people. And you know, those, those pacer bots are kind of a cool thing to, if you're looking to do like zone two stuff and you don't have other people to ride with, you can kind of cruise along at a pretty high speed. And there's something about that. Like I want to stay with the group. So that does kind of change that dynamic just a little bit. And it keeps you there with them. So you're a little bit more engaged. It goes by a little bit faster. So you're kind of paying attention to it that way. You're like watching the group and that's kind of your pace. And then you can watch some YouTube videos or something like that. And it kind of like helps you get through the time. So the University of YouTube has been good to me on the trainer over the years, and that's been a great way for me to pass the time, and I love that. And those other things that I just mentioned are the other ways that I try and do that. And, yeah, that's that how that's how it works for me. But- Probably once a week, um, I if I'm doing a Zone 2 ride, I will just do it with the Pacer Bot group on Zwift. Yeah. And then I have to pay a little bit of attention just to stay with the group. That's exactly what I'm talking and, about. And you have to pick a level that is... Stable. That is, is sustainable. <laughs> The good thing now with Zwift is you can teleport to whatever pace group you want. Oh, yes. Fix it. Yes. So you could start with like the 2.6 kilowatt, you know, per gram group. Um, per gram. Or I watt. Gram. My, did I get it right? My, my, my per, per watts per, per kilogram. Yeah. You can start with the 2.6 watts per kilogram no, it's, group. I think gram. <laughs> 2.6. Microgram. Like a Boy. tiny. Boy, shut up. So, shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> But you can you can use the teleport feature and and it's it's on the Zwift companion app or it's on your screen if you bring up the menu or not the menu but whatever. If you're using like a tablet if or something. If you're using like the tablet, you can you can pull it up and if you click on the teleport button, it will give you all the options. I wanna teleport to the three point two or to the or back to the one point eight. Wait, I've been going for 20 minutes. I need a break for a second. I'm gonna teleport back to the one point eight group. I'll stay with that group. For five minutes mm. and then teleport back into the 2.6 or you can do a, or or a coffee 9. break and it'll just you go get a 
coffee or bathroom break. You get a three minute break. That is my most favorite thing coming no. back from okay. being an RGT for a year. That coffee break is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I, I love that thing. You get a three minute break. Have you? I have not seen. Play, I haven't been on Zwift in a year. Oh, yeah. really? There's they changed a couple things, and those yeah. two things are really good. The, the teleporting and the coffee break are like primo. So the coffee yeah. break, you just hit the button. You get like a coffee break in the first, I think it's like three minutes or something like that. You get a 30-second coffee break. So let's say you need to like tighten up your shoe or you need to make a quick adjustment. It will basically, you push the coffee break, and it keeps your guy riding with the group so that you don't jump off for 30 seconds, and then they ride away from you, and you get a sprint to get back on. It's not like that. So you can you know, make that adjustment. And then every 30 minutes after that, you get a three-minute coffee break, meaning you can jump off the trader, go, go use the bathroom go get a cup of coffee I, I like this past tuesday we were doing our team ride and like you could see that i was taking a coffee break during the thing and lance is like oh you're gonna go take a leak jake i'm like no i'm actually on the Stretching. foam roll i was on the foam roll for 30 minutes because my hip was bugging me i foam rolled it out i got back on and i was able to finish the ride with the group wow. so your avatar has a little coffee cup above his head yeah. while you're taking coffee i breaks. still so think that who... they have a missed opportunity there you should have the ability to pick change, your icon and your icon. you know you got a guy peeing in the bush you got a guy stretching you got <laughs> a guy poop like emoji <laughs> yeah. you got a poop emoji above that your tom head would be fa- yeah I'm tom thinking. we were talking about that too but yeah that would be fantastic so huh. but yeah that's a pretty cool thing i feel like there's a lot of new stuff going on with swift i think they just upped the rankings to all the way up to 100 now so yeah there's like been a i think it was announced maybe yep. last week while i was missing in action yeah and they have a whole bunch of other uh, stuff too levels to 100 levels up to 100 yep. your own i don't know it's not really levels rank yeah, no. but yeah it's kind of like your ranking or i guess they wouldn't call it ranking how many drips do you got what? I have like 13 million. 13 million? How many are you up to? I don't know. I think I'm about ready to turn over 20 million dollars, 20 million drips. Cool. <laughs> Drops. But I haven't, uh, that was after missing a full year too. Yeah. And I missed a bunch of level ups, but that's your hair. Anyway, but yeah, that's, that's, those are my two cents. Can Doing you it with teleport other people. to the front of the race? And take sure. the me, I don't think the teleport function works in a race. Mm. It also doesn't work if you're on a group ride. Or the coffee break doesn't work in a race either. Coffee should just make that pay to win. Uh, yeah. Pay to win. <laughs> right. <laughs> They can make some money. Mm. Come on. Right on. Well, that was close. Uh, again, you guys were very close, but wrong across the board. <laughs> Sorry. Damn it. Sorry to break this to you. Okay, we'll get one. We'll get the one. Right, right answer was point. trainer rides are going to suck. Sorry. Period. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah. yeah. They oh. blow. Uh, okay, here's the last question. We could go long form on this one. Okay. What's the best color to paint a bike? <laughs> Asking for a friend. Shiny black. Orange. No, no, there's only one wrong answer. <laughs> that, that's it. Shiny black. Dialed orange. Dialed orange. Just solid orange? Are you going to put no, a fade sparkly. in there? No, you need sparkle. some sparkle. You got to do like the, you got to glitter. <laughs> always some glitter. Glitter. <laughs> glitter. The answer is always glitter. From Candy the Stripper. <laughs> <laughs> candy supplies Candy supplies candy all of my glitter. supplies all my glitter. Where do you get your glitter from? There's the only one spot. There's only one spot. Can, it's candy's the candy. only, only you option. You are an aficionado. <laughs> you love painting bikes. You're an artist, all that other fun stuff. What's the most beautiful bike you've ever seen in your life? And what was it? What color was it? Oh, gee. Most beautiful. I mean, you bike. were at that. What, what was the the show you were at? Oh, the made bike show. Made bike I show. mean, you probably saw some like incredible magic stuff. Paint does is incredible, right? Yeah. And the closer you get to it, the more you can see the detail and the attention sure. and where the hours were. But I guess for me right now, it's mosaic. They have, you know, a white a white pearl bike with um, their logo and other uh, like inside of the fork with like a rainbow splash motif. If you, if you can find the, the pictures of it, it's incredible. But I talked to the guy about that, and he said uh, that was like a 90-hour paint job. Wow. And I just couldn't. That would have taken me, too. Where would all the time go? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, every time I see a white with rainbow bike, I have to stop and be like, ooh, what's this? Uh, but that's every color. That's me copping out and not committing to one thing. You know, what's what's the best color? That's a really good question. I don't know. Um, there can be only one. I mean, it's it's not black. Orange and black. Orange and black. Orange with a little camo. Orange, with a little bit of camo. Orange fade Di- digital to black camo. with Ooh. some glitter. Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I don't know. I what? haven't seen any of specialized current stuff with the Ale Sprint because they always do a special edition of that, which is insane. Like you know, pink sparkle with leopard print fork, you know, and or you know, trout or salmon. How, what's going year. on with the the bike painting company? Are you are you busy right now? Uh, I'm extremely busy, treading water. Really? Yeah, I have, I have a never ending paint job in the garage. I'm gonna get through at some point, but it's just finding time for it is so hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Up your prices. <laughs> <laughs> until, until your demand goes down. Oof. Just keep raising prices. Hey, Lance, do you have, can you find real quick the pictures that Mike Hansen um, posted for the BMC ores that he painted? He he did a pretty incredible paint job on this particular bike. It's uh, What did he post it on? It was probably Instagram, but maybe on Strava. I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, I need to get you together with Mike. He's super cool. He's a really cool guy. And he's got like, he's just, he's another one of those, Jack holes that's got way too many talents like you. Just um, good at everything. <laughs> no, no sick. joke. The, the, I mean, he's a guy that like just says, I'm going to build a sprinter. And then like he built a sprinter and it took him about a year to get it all done. But you go and look at it and it looks like one of the ones that you would get for about $300,000. And he did everything by himself, like everything. Like he built all of his own cabinets. He did all of his own electrical work. He planned it all out. He, I mean, he did everything. And it's like, how are you this talented? And then he's also the guy that that paints like uh, old old cars, like classic cars, and so you can kind of well, is that you, orange? Well, that's or not. Is, that, or is that red? That's just that's one of the early. That's one of the early. Ooh, um, good lighting. Yeah, sorry. This is real exhilarating. People can see exactly what we're talking <laughs> well, about here. Yeah, yeah. But that's Cut not this, that's not the this. finished product. You have to see it in the sun. It's got all kinds of fades. It's got like he used this like crackle paint thing that Ooh. was on there. I mean, there's all kinds of craziness that he put into this bike. Yeah, it's just because he felt like doing it because he can. But again, he's painted cars that like it's a classic car and it's like the one that you look at and like, oh, that person probably spent thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars on the paint job. Like, oh yeah, I did that. I'm like, come on. Well, <laughs> and I don't know if you saw at the lab, there's a, a the Dow podcast. It's a metal sign that this and it's got all of our names on there. I don't know if you've seen that before, but he he painted that for us and he just did it in an afternoon because he was probably bored and was like, I'm gonna make this for the guys. And is that the one with pinstriping on it? Yeah. Yeah, so he's Jeez. just one of those guys, but Oof. about as nice of a guy as you're going to ever meet. But you guys would have fun mm. painting bikes, playing bikes together. But something like that is kind of interesting. I, I kind of tend to gravitate towards the cooler colors as opposed to that particular color, but I have a, a full-on appreciation for that. He also painted this road bike here, too. Um, that's his uh, BMC Time Machine road. Oof. Yeah, Birdie. it's pretty nuts. So he's super talented, but God, I don't... I don't know. To answer hey, thanks, your, thanks, Lance. Now I'm jealous. <laughs> Sorry, <man. That> wasn't <laughs> to, real good to answer your question, I, I don't know. I would have to have something that was like... I guess my problem lately is that um, when I think about what to paint a bike, I always go maybe three levels too far. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you start with a color and a fade or a pattern mm -hmm. or something. And then, you know, put this on top of it. And it's a hat on a hat. And then when it's all done, you're like, cool. That would look great if it was just the one color with the text. <laughs> I don't know. I still like your polka dot bike. I think that's pretty solid. Thank you. That's yeah. my favorite bike too. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Um, I don't know. What, what's your next project? What do you got up over your sleeve? Do you got something that's in the works for you? Oh, I want to build a lightweight full suspension mountain bike. Okay. So I, so I can have a decent gravel ride slash mountain bike. Because my current mountain bike is the full slack enduro, which, uh, you know, climbing. That's fantastic for gravel riding oh. and, and climbing. It's so XC nice. racing. It's a 30 pound yeah. bike. 36 pounds 36 of carbon. Pounds of carbon. <laughs> Just <laughs> solid carbon tubes. But like, you know, I talked to Josh at Hi-Fi about doing a lightweight wheel set, which sure. he has all lined up. Cool. There's, there's Chinese frames you can get that don't look too sketchy. And then for, you know, for a while, components were reasonably priced for like a nice fork and, and shock combo. So I was like, ooh, is this going to be a doable thing? But then what do you paint it? I don't know. Hmm. That's where I'm drawing a blank. So Would you tie it into your kit? No. No? It's, do you want kit to like changes every year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to go out of style. I don't know. I like, like I don't know. Like pinks and purples and blues, I think those are always fun to, to play with because it's just not something you see all the time. I've been riding on a black bike for for a while and shiny just, black, shiny black. <laughs> <laughs> I had shiny black and matte black, and it was just that was what I could get, and that was what I was able to get a good deal on. And I just eh, it's just a bike, but I'm kind of tired of riding on black right now. And Do you I, guys like those like the chrome foil colors that Trek is doing? Sometimes it looks like a colored mirror. Yeah, sometimes That's yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Or the ones that change. Specialized has some bikes where they where the color changes depending on what angle you're looking at. Yeah, it. I don't know about those because it's like you know there's eight or nine of them, and so everyone kind of buys the same stuff. Yeah, and it, it all like that's kind of like late yeah. two thousand. Close to like 2010, like that that came out like to 2015, and like it kind of like ran its course. I think it's time for something new. So 
Now there is there are like you know the hypercolor temperature sensitive pigments oh, you can get those those are cool that's so it's like when you pick up your bike you can have a handprint on it yeah that's cool right every, oh. i would every time i sweat on it i would have, yep, a little <laughs> have drop. polka dots on my <laughs> frame and then i i talked to a guy about doing one with lumilor i think it's called but it's like you paint on a ground layer you paint on a luminescent layer and then paint on the positive layer and so you, you you have to paint all these wire traces into it and then somehow hook up a battery and then you flick it on and you get that blue glow or whatever. What? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. There's like one demo <laughs> on YouTube of it. It's super expensive. But then on top of the luminant layer, you can do like transparent things and like, you know, have huh. a light up dragon on your thing. What? So maybe that's happening. I don't know. Yeah. It's happening. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gotta go vintage. One very wealthy, very stupid patron. To cover. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I, I don't know something like from like the seventies, like those. Uh, I don't know the, the sparkly, glittery kind of thing. Something like that'd be kind of fun. The bass boat. Yeah, you know, there you go. Yeah, something like that might be fun. But like, have it be a little bit of a fade where it's like maybe starts that way. Like I don't know, party up front, business in the rear kind of thing. I don't know. Love have, it. Have fun with it. Cool. Anything else? No, sorry. You guys were, again, so close on that one. The correct answer, yellow. Yellow, Just yellow. Is. That's Just it. Just yellow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it next time, guys. Flat <laughs> yellow. Huh? Next time we'll do better. Hopefully you're yeah. coming back on the podcast. Not with these failures, <laughs> but maybe a, it's you could a do podcast like the- <laughs> that, you know. Banana banana with uh, some brown spots on it. Ooh. Let's go. Uh-huh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Shiny black. Shiny black. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening, Lance. <laughs> Quit trying to make shiny black a thing. <laughs> All right, let's do the one last thing. One last thing, Matt Legrand, you always go first. I go first first because I just like to steal the show. I am posting a video. um, I think it's just going to go live Sunday morning because that'll be a fun time to do it. Uh, It will be like the DC Rainmaker interview thing. Check it out. I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be good. I'm very interested to see what his like studio looks like. like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a studio tour. Is it um, big? I mean, is it pretty sizable? It's, two stories. it's not massive it's it, it's too it's it's basically like um it it's underneath a fancy building basically okay. um maybe similar size to your store okay um something like that is okay. what i would say but it's just like it's taller so that he's kind of like made it into two levels sure and then yeah i so. was always kind of curious is he doing that from his house does he have a studio what's the deal there and because yeah. like his um his shop his main shot that he uses is talking right. head. It looks like it's just like a little workbench area, like in the corner yeah. of a room somewhere. And and then you can see another area where he has maybe like a trainer set up, but mm-hmm. then he's always outside doing his stuff. So it's like, all right, right well, is he, he is just out. doing this from home? Because he doesn't look like he's using a, a ton of space. No, he has um he has that like so he has he has like the uh kind of talking head section, which is like a really small corner yeah. area. And then to the um to the left of that is like like a bike trainer section yeah. and it's basically imagine like this wall next to us our, our listeners are gonna love this but yeah. like and at the time he had four trainers set up with four bikes uh-huh. and then you go down this hallway that's just lined with bikes there's probably like another 10 bikes that are just like really you know connected into the wall via the you know kind of like the stuff that we've done before with like the wheel you yeah, know it's just tucked in and, and so they're kind of tilted at an angle so sure. you can walk through this and then there's like a gear closet on along this hallway gear closet and it's just like you know it's just buckets or little clear containers of hun- you know hundreds of watches and bike computers and, yeah, and yeah, electronics. You know, camera stuff and yeah. stuff like that too that he needs but he's also he also reviews drones he reviews all these things so he action cameras all that stuff yeah they're all in there and then you know bathroom and then little kitchen yeah and then in the back it's like this almost like living room area thing and so there's a couch there's a peloton back there tv and then there's like two desks for him and his wife like kind of one in front of the other and uh and imac on there yeah. and stuff like that so he's probably doing pretty well with this whole dc rainmaker thing yeah, is his wife so. working with him 100 percent, or does she yeah i mean she I, does the newsletter yeah she does yeah she does a lot she'll do um some editing mm-hmm. she'll do some light editing and then but he does the rest of the editing for the most part and then um she does a lot of like she, she writes her own stuff she does a newsletter um she she does a whole bunch of stuff. She does all like the because at that level, at that size, there's there's billing, there's yeah. there's lots of stuff, and so she does all the paperwork. Does like he all have the staff manage the business? No, I don't think so. I think okay. it's just the two of them. And then I think maybe at some point he may try to you know bring in some some help or whatever. Yeah. But um, and I'm, I mean, 
by that, you know, I mean, like we all have like accountants and things like that. Right. So mm-hmm. there's, there's that part of it too. But I think that she does a lot of the, the books and stuff too. Gotcha. So, yeah. so when are you moving over there to uh, team up with them next week? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. We'll team up. <laughs> yep. Yep. A little bromance going on there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, it, it was really fun. We had a good time. Right on. But, um, but yeah, I think I'll stay in the States, do my own thing. We'll see. Would you say that he's just as popular over there as he is here in the States? I think that anyone that is looking to learn about sports tech stuff like, yeah, knows, who he knows who he is and goes to his website or channel or whatever uh-huh. to figure it out. So I don't think that that's specific to a country, although, you know, I guess people that are English speaking are probably more leaning towards him. So that would be, you know, UK and the United States and, mm-hmm. you know, different places like that. But like, it seems like he had a decent amount of fans just in, just in, um, Amsterdam where we were and stuff too. Yeah. So he's been around for a while. I can he's remember kind of 15, 20 years ago. I can remember like yep. looking at computers and I was talking to somebody in REI once and they're like, Oh, did you read the review on this on DC Rainmakers website? And I'm uh-huh. like, Oh yeah, I did check that out. And like, that guy's great. And like, Oh yeah, well, and like, I, this is when I lived in Southern California and right. I was actually up at REI in Seattle and he was telling me about it. I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess everybody knows about this guy. And yeah, I think he, he started up the blog and then it was just like, it, he just became like the yeah. thing and he's very detailed, you know, detail yes. oriented, which yeah. I think people really like. Yep. And then it, it grew so much, mostly like the website grew so much that it grew him out of his job. So, hmm. and I think he was really into, he worked for Microsoft and I think he had a really good job at Microsoft that he had to leave. So hmm. cool. How mad am I going to be when I see this video? Pretty mad, mad. envious or jealous? <laughs> Mad about? I don't think you're. I think on a level of one to a million, it's gonna be low. I think you're gonna be like in the twenties, maybe. I'll find a way. You can get angry. <laughs> Comment. Angry comments are welcome on my channel. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. No, because it's it's more like you know you, you get a product, blah blah blah. It comes in, you do this, and like you know you you have a little B roll area. You have like here's your studio thing or whatever, and it's a it's a big studio. He he had the like open house party there and there was probably 50 people there and there was enough room for everyone. So, wow. It's yeah. I mean, I, I, I have a, basically I have a closet for my YouTube studio, <laughs> but I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was jealous. It was more just like, okay, this works for him. My closet works for me. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll have a space, but yeah, yeah I'm sure it's going to happen. Cool beans. Hey, Dylan, one last yeah. thing. Last thing. Uh, one last thing is the um, East Portland Youth Cycling, mm-hmm. the juniors team th- that is targeting track nationals for next year. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, that's why I wanted to plug is that uh, they are going hard. I have seen their training rides. I'm not allowed to go on them anymore because I can't keep up. Wow. <laughs> Those kids are freaking fast. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be super fun to watch. Wow. Their race calendar next year is all over the western half of the U.S. They're targeting uh, Phoenix. They're targeting up in B.C. Uh, it's going to be nuts, so watch for that. I don't understand how James has the time to do all that no, stuff. It, I, I mean, he is a hero. He is a champion. He is yeah. just a great guy to boot. But, my God, he is, that's that's a big sacrifice. Like He's given like a lot of time to this but like when they go up to do the velodrome in seattle i mean that's like a full-on weekend thing where they're leaving every like every weekend every yeah. weekend you know it's three hours four hours up there you're there all weekend and you know shacking up probably in some hotel somewhere and then it's another three four hour drive back barring no traffic and he does that over and over again and then they're at all the other races and now they're going to be traveling even more you're saying yeah oh it's, my it's Lord. wild and uh, i mean plus could you imagine doing that as a parent if the kids weren't into it oh yeah but these kids are eating it up yeah they're doing i mean they were posting good. pictures of rainy and cold you know three-hour training rides yeah. and they're just loving it they're, yeah they're oh. so fast Oof. yeah yeah so it's gonna be a fun year next year good on them wish them luck yeah cool hey hep yeah f you <laughs> <laughs> one last thing <laughs> oh no, is that what i'm supposed to say one last one, oh, one last yeah. thing <laughs> I really have much to uh, to add. I don't have anything to plug. So uh, here's the deal. I'm the best there is. I wake simple. up and I, mean, I, I piss wake up excellent. In the morning, I piss excellent. I love this. And stuff. nobody can hang with my stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just a just a big hairy American winning machine. If you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> That's Lance that. Epler yeah, right suck there. Suck it. <laughs> Uh, my one last thing is we are now in the throes of fundraising for Bikes for Kids. And yes. we are going to try and raise as much money as humanly possible to do uh, bike delivery to a bunch of kids here uh, in the next few months. And until then, we're going to try and raise as much as we can. So you can um, 
Gosh, we'll have to post it back up again, but I do believe it's on our Facebook, social medias, and all that other stuff. You can click on a link to go into the Bikes for Kids GoFundMe if you want to make a little contribution there. You know, even if it's just a couple bucks, two, three, four, five bucks, it all adds up. And if you get enough people, it is pretty sizable. So we will buy a bunch of brand new bikes for kids and helmets and bike locks, and we'll go out and do a uh, workshop for them to teach them how to use all that stuff. And then they're going to think they're doing this fun little clinic. And then all of a sudden, hey, you get a brand new bike. You get a brand new bike. Everybody gets a brand new bike. And it's a it's a fantastic it's glorious day. It's a Oprah moment. Yeah. yeah. So if uh, you're interested in helping out, though, that would be glorious. You can uh, also, I guess, just go to GoFundMe and search bike for kids it's under the dial cycling team oh it's also attached to our 501c3 nonprofit, so it is a tax write-off so if you want to help out some kids and get yourself a little tax write-off yep snappity snap all good all right boys it was fun dylan thank you for coming in always Thanks for having always me. a pleasure you want us to keep that seat warm for you let's go i'm yeah. not leaving <laughs> you can't kick me out <laughs> right on all right we will be back next week with another one of these and until then bye now. now